So as I was saying today, Jesus Christ gave his life for you. And they are the words of Jesus. They are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. And these words are life, that he died and rose again. And if you want life, if you want eternal life, and if you want to get to heaven and know that you are saved, the words of Jesus will, will be a blessing to you because he tells you how to get saved. Jesus says that, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. These are the words of Jesus. We live in a dark world. The world is getting darker by the day. And Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Where he will give you hope, he will give you peace. He will give you joy. He will give you strength. He will give you strength in your heart. And peace in your heart. And love in your heart. So, he is the bread of life where He will comfort you and give you strength. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. There's only one way, my friends. There's only one way to heaven. And there's only one truth. There's only one life. Assalamu alaikum. Only one life, only one way, only one truth, my friends. And that is in Jesus Christ. Only by Him can we be saved, my friend. There's no other way. And Christ gave His life a ransom. He says in Mark chapter 10, I gave my life a ransom for many. He gave His life a ransom for you. In other words, He took your place. He died on your behalf. He died on your behalf that you may be saved. That you may have salvation. That you may have hope. You can have hope today in a world that's getting darker, and a world that's getting more confusing, and a world that is broken, and a world that is messed up. You can have hope today by knowing that Jesus Christ sacrificed himself as your Lord and Savior. By knowing that he gave his life for you on that cross my friends so my friends life everlasting is in him life everlasting is in him life eternal is in him don't go the way of the cults don't go the way of false religion don't go the, folk, the way of secularism for secularism will blind you don't go the way of the blindness of our society Go the way of the light of the world, which is Jesus. God bless you, Go the way of the light of the world, which is Jesus. For in Jesus, He will show you the way to heaven. In Jesus, He will show you the way to know eternal life. He will deliver you from your drugs. He will deliver you from your addiction. He will deliver you from your problems. He will deliver you whatever you are going through. He will help you, for He is the Savior who died and rose again. He will save you and help you and comfort you if you go to Him. So Christ, Christ is the one that can save you today. Christ is the one that can set you free. His words are life. His words are eternal life and power, His words are joy, His words are strength, His words will set you free. You don't need false religion, you don't need New Ageism, you don't need Marxism, you don't need philosophy, you don't need any ism, you need Jesus. That's what you need my friend. You need Christ. For only in Christ can He deliver you, and only in Christ can you be saved. Whether you're in prison, whether in your school or college or home, wherever you are, only Christ can save you. Only Christ can deliver you. Only Christ can help you. 
Nobody else can help you. Nobody else can hear your cry. Nobody else can save you. Nobody else can forgive you of your sin. Only by the name of Jesus Christ, who died and rose again. Only by that name, if you call upon that name, wherever you may be, you may be in a pit. You may be in a pit. You may be in a nightclub dancing and boogieing away. You may be sleeping around. You may be cracked up on drugs. You may be... You may be dying on a hospital bed. You may be at school or college studying. But wherever you are, if you call upon the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, you can be saved and you can be forgiven and you can be delivered and you can be set free because in the name of Jesus is the power of God in the name of Jesus is deliverance in the name of Jesus is goodness and godness for in him is the fullness of the Godhead bodily there is nobody in heaven in history like him God bless you. Do you love Jesus? Yes. He died for you, ladies. He died as your savior. He died and rose again. He gave his life for you. He shed his blood. So, all that you need is truth. All that you need is truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth. That is what you need, is truth not the lies that are being pumped out on the media. You're being blinded by the media is blinding you. The God of this world is blinding you. The media is blinding you. The BBC is blinding you. Sky TV are blinding you. You're being blind by the media is blinding you. The God of this world is blinding you by false ideologies, false philosophies, a false religion. They are from the devil and they are the work of the devil and they are blinding you. They are blinding you, making you comfortable in this world and happy in this world. But the truth is when you die, you either go to heaven or you go to hell. And so you're being blinded by the BBC, blinded by the media, blinded by the advertising, blinded by the sports, you're being blind by all of it. It's all blinding you. Everything's blinding you. But Jesus wants to bless you. Jesus wants to save you. Jesus wants to deliver you. And give you hope and salvation. I'll give you another 10 seconds. Does anybody here want to prove to me that evolution's true? Anybody with a PhD in biology, come and prove to us that evolution's true. I'll give you 10 seconds again. 10 seconds for anybody here to prove to us that evolution is true. Are you ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Do you want to prove evolution's true, man? You want to prove evolution? Do you understand here? No, I want you to tell me what kind of evolution. I'm on about macroevolution. Macroevolution. Yes. You got macro, which is the big picture, and micro, which is the small picture. Macro is the big. Yes. Talking. When I say prove evolution, I'm on about proving macroevolution. That is, that over millions of years, we came from little trilobites to us humans. That's macroevolution. If any biologist or you would like to prove to us how that took place, I'd be more than willing to listen. It's not about education. Let me tell you this. 
I know for a fact that macroevolution cannot be proved. And even if a PhD in biology came here, I'm absolutely clear that they could not prove macroevolution. I've had a PhD, I think I've had two PhDs, one PhD in biology come here, and I asked the question, well come and prove evolution sir, come on bro, come and do it. <laughs> come and do it, you can do it if you try. You've had two PhDs, sir. Yeah, and when I asked them a question, they walk. You know why? Because they know they cannot prove evolution. Macroevolution. Okay. I'm using this so people can hear. Okay, I've heard, I've heard what you say. Uh, macro, I'm using this so people can hear. Macro and micro. Could you just step closer here? Okay. Macro. I'm doing it from the actual looking at science. Let me show you. Well, I'll show you. Mutation and natural selection is what makes evolution. Okay. Mutations, you have to have millions of mutations to change anything within any, a human body or any body. Yeah, well, let, let me finish. It's evolution. It doesn't matter which way you look at it, whether it's you, me, a crow, plants, animals, it's still evolution. Okay, let me explain to you. Nobody, nobody has ever seen macro evolution in time. People have seen little rabbits get bigger rabbits. Have you ever seen a rabbit change into something else? So if you're preaching about evolution, why are you Because I'm here to, I'm questioning those people who say that, no, 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 people say, Anybody proved evolution? Yes, Einstein. Nobody ever has come here and proved evolution when I've been here. And I've been coming here eight years. I'm not going to prove it. Have you heard of a Kawanti? A Kawanti was an overnight evolution okay. from a badger. Right? So that was born and then oh, straight away. That's quite a lot different. Why is it different? Oh, I don't know, but there were some chromosomes messed up in the badgers that made it. And therefore, it was more like, uh, what's it called? That's the okay. That is evolution. Can, can we ask you something? Is it accepted? Is it accepted in the academic world from biology? Is it accepted in the academic world that we have observed macro evolution? This is what you're describing. Do you get the time scale that happens? You're a wingman, aren't you? Let me finish. Let me finish. Yeah, you're a wingman. I'm just the one that goes around doing all the experiments, how annoying you are. I'm taking it, I'm taking it. Is it acceptable? Is it acceptable? Don't go now, because you know where you are. I'm Jason Bird. Is that the name you want to call yourself? I'm well known on YouTube and in Oldham. It's so, so bad that comes to work. I hear what you're saying. There's so many videos of me, there's more videos of me than Elvis. Oh, do you know what it is? Can you just stand close here? I'm unsure. What, what was the question again? Macroevolution. Yeah, so I'm just saying, I'm just saying, evolution. just speak up then. Yeah, yeah. Well, you price something to death to make it. The thing is, the time, again, the time scale that they were using is macro. Yeah. But you can't argue that because the fossils yeah, are supposedly yeah. show that data. Now, if you look at humans over the past 100 years, we were smaller in ways. If you look in whole, 
150 years ago, all the doorways were about this height. Yeah. Front doorways. Yeah. That's height evolution in a place where now you've got people walking this high. And that's not just from immigration of people mixing, because that's been going on for generations anyway. Can I come in? Yeah. Door height, I don't disagree. Don't disagree. That was with humans. Yeah. That was with humans. Yeah. But, but your question was evolution. Yeah, but the evolution is two things. It's either micro or macro. Micro is when, when humans get bigger, when rabbits are bigger or smaller, different colours. Like, for, for example, Darwin's finches. Right. They're still finches even today. They're different coloured finches. That's correct. So that's micro evolution. But nobody has ever seen macro evolution. Now, there might, there might be an anomaly that like you just pointed out, but that's not proof to show macro evolution on a steady basis. I'll give you an example. Uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, the, the little things, I'm getting a bit tired. What? Uh, rats? No, no, the, 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 the little uh, gooey things. Uh, oh, jellyfish. No, no, no. no. <laughs> I, I'm, just, I'm just getting a bit tired. I'm getting a bit tired. Uh, uh, I, I forgot, I forgot. That's anyway, that's fine. Right. Right. All I was going to say is, I don't Why? Why? Um, so what I'm saying is, yeah. nobody's actually observed macro evolution. So all this information that you're giving, which I don't contest about dinosaurs and all the all the stuff, what is happening is people are going to the history and they're reading the history from something they've never observed. They've never observed it, so, but they're going to the history. That's why Karl Popper, one of the greatest scientists, uh, scientists of philosopher of science said this, he said evolution is not science, right. because in normal science you can do an experiment and see it in time, yeah. see what your, your experiments have, I would agree. But, but you can't do that with mathematics, you've got to go to the past. So Dr. Mayer, who was one of the greatest biologists in, in the history of biology, I'm just shouting so people can hear, said that uh, evolution is a historical science. So my contention to you is, I don't dispute the evidence of the past, but I would say it's been interpreted in a way that has not been confirmed, but by a theory, rather than in time being confirmed. Well, it is all theoretical, isn't it? Because we right. can't prove, yeah, we can't prove that yeah, this chicken came from a dinosaur. But if you look at the um, the animal that was our mother, supposedly, you know, the little like a sort of thing. From billions of years ago, the whole geological atmosphere of the planet, as far as we can tell, changed dramatically. So dinosaurs might not have been fully wiped out, they had to fucking skin, they had to completely change their weight. Right. Now as coming back back to present day, again with the scale of macro evolution, we're very young people. I'll just I'll just bring this up a bit. That's right. I'll just bring this in. Go on. It's like I, I, I can't say that you would ever be able to observe macro evolution because of the, the time scale it would take for one uh, generation to then evolve. Like, if you can evolve in one lifetime, fair enough, but you're born with your set of biology and your little carbon in the dust or whatever that's in you. Yeah. And then that will grow from influence and momentum that you carry forward. You can't really evolve. Yeah. Like, unless you are injected or have some exterior influence, you wouldn't. In your one life, you wouldn't evolve. So I would agree with you. But also, microevolution is every day. You know Diet Coke? The worst of all kinds of this drinks for you aside from energy drinks. I like that because I like, I like that. <laughs> but like as soon as you drink that, your whole microsphere, your, your whole biology of bacteria changes. Now this is I don't disagree with this. Right. I, I totally agree with microevolution. But now I've, I've remembered you just got it got it for me. Bacteria. Bacteria. Dr. Sachs has a, a research department. Have a look at this. Is that S A C K? S A X. Dr. Sachs. And he has a research department and um, he has about three scientists and he's done as much research as he can to try and manipulate biological uh, entities to change, right? One of the studies that they've done is bacteria and they've done 40,000 generations of bacteria trying to get them to change into something different, completely different. And they found the 40,000 uh, generations of bacteria, I'm just speaking to people here, it comes to it comes to like a million years in, in, in human life 
right. And they found that the bacteria is changed in, within itself, but it's not come, become anything new. Right. Any new species. That's that's also what I would say. Going back to what I was saying. Obviously, when you're for human, especially when you're born, again without an external factor going into you to change you, you can't really evolve. So I would agree, macroevolution cannot be witnessed, I would say. Right. Now, if we cannot witness it, right? Then the first thing we have to acknowledge, it's not got the same scientific base as microevolution, right? Whereas a lot of evolutionists, principally like militant atheists do, uh, they want to come and say, oh, it's science, science. Well, what a lot of the evolutionary science is, is what is called confirming the consequence. Right. Okay. And what that is, is a lot of science, even whatever science you study, a lot of it, like 50% of science that we actually say is fact, is a lot of it is what is called confirming the consequence. That is, the scientist has a theory, goes out, finds the information that they want, that they want. to confirm their theory. Yeah. So a lot of evolution, I'm not saying all of it, but a lot of macroevolution, I would say, is what is called confirming the consequence, which is happening in a lot of departments of science anyway. I would agree. So, so that's my first point. My second point is, just switch it, uh, just just switch a little bit off topic, just a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. For that. And if you want me to pull me back on evolution, yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah. But it it, 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 it's, it 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 dovetails into this evolution creation issue. The Bible in Romans chapter one, it says that we can see creation. God has given. Uh, I'll show you. I'll show you in the show. I'll show you in Romans. I insist that God bless you. Sorry, yeah. In Romans uh, chapter 1. Matthew. Can I use your Bible? Thank you, thank you. Nice to talk to you. Romans. Romans chapter 1. Uh, he was a nice guy and I really appreciate the discussion and people can see whether you get the website uh, it won't be edited. So the video won't be edited. So and when I get stuck I'm going to have to take it off until I am not stuck. It says this. Just get here a bit closer. It says It says, uh, it says, the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness because what may be known of God is manifest in them for God has shown it to them but since the creation of the world his invisible attributes are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, for nor were they thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. So what, what God is saying is, creation actually speaks of God, but mankind chooses to suppress that truth. So in the ancient world, philosophers, Socratic philosophers, and you're a lovely person to talk to, by the way, that the, the philosophers, uh, so so uh, the Socratic philosophers, etc., they talked about creation either was done by matter or by mind. So they argued, was it matter that brought it all into existence or mind? And I would say my contention is that, let's just say that evolution is true. It can't be true, even if we accept it is true, because it, it would have had to have started by a mind, not by matter. Because ma how can matter control and order? Are you aware of the order, the, uh, not, uh, the order of disorder? What? Well, you tell me. So it's all the 
with very new research that's and bear in mind the scientific experiments have to be repeated numerous times to be said that's an experiment and that is the conclusion. Now with the order of disorder they talk about quantum physics on a level where you can observe um, these things having an outward influence, so that would argue, I would argue that's mind, and then that would change what's going on there. Now, you can observe something and change it with just your perception on it, and they, again there's this uh, argument of the order is put into disorder from consciousness being um, well, affecting whatever it is uh, is observing. But the order of disorder is a very normal thing, like if you look at sacred geometry and how it's all, you know, well, there and it's patterns and what have you. That's, you can't really deny that that exists because you see it everywhere and you can put patterns to everything. But then that is mind trying to comprehend the matter. So I would argue that it is like the ancients believed, including ancient Egyptians and going back as ancient Sumer. It's not, we, we, we're trying to put words to it. But you've got to remember, like, if there are beings elsewhere, which I would believe, and I do believe, you know, it would be silly to say not, regardless of whether you believe or don't believe in God. But you can't say, if it's mind or matter, that's the way we would put it together to show the universal consciousness, or the source, yeah, or God. Yeah. And I would argue that it's unfathomable. Like, we can witness the second and first dimensions within our 3D reality, but we've proven there's a fourth dimension of space and eclecticness that we can't actually touch in our material world. So that wipes matter and mind away. And you've got a higher level that we are not part of. So, but one that excites me because it, it, it's there and we're in it, but we can't observe it. It's like an ant looking at a boot. If you yeah. stood in front of an ant, it would avoid you. It would know you're there yeah. because of yeah. its own consciousness. But again, it wouldn't look up and think, shit, that's, that's a human being right there. Yeah. It, that, that has destructive power against it. It wouldn't think that because it's on its own level. And I'd argue we're probably the same. Well, you said some really good things there. I think um, when I say mind, I'm not just I'm not on about just human mind. Right. I'm on about a spiritual like an mind. Like an intelligence. An intelligence above that. And what you said, what you've acknowledged, or, or what you seem to acknowledge, is in the chaos order, there is consciousness behind that of some kind, whether it be beings in other planets. Right? Well, my argument would be to you to say, because you, you're saying that, that this... Uh, order, disorder, and all this uh, different uh, quantum uh, fourth dimension is beyond our minds, which I would not disagree. But the I would say that there has to be an ultimate mind behind all this dimension, um, because of the, the massive, the, the intricacy of nature, the intelligence that we see within nature, i.e. mathematics and logic. Where did mathematics and logic come from? And then thirdly, the vastness of nature. So you've acknowledged within this complex argument that you've made, which is a very creative, interesting argument, and a really good argument, but uh, it's way beyond me, but I've been able to, to, to pick a few things out from a philosophical point of view. Yeah, definitely. And the things that I picked out is one, you did mention consciousness. So do you believe in there are consciousnesses? But I would say, surely there has to be an ultimate mind that has made it because we have such intricacy in the complexity of nature. We have mind in terms of mathematics and logic, where did they come from? And the vastness of this order disorder. And we're all, how, how, you, you're more clever than me on the map of the I, I science. How far are we from the sun? And if we was just a couple of hours near the sun, or a couple of hours away from the sun, everything, the fabric would break. So how can it, it could not be that that is by an accident. It must be intelligent design. I would argue, yeah. so would argue those are my arguments to, to put to you. Now, let's see how much time we got <laughs> left on here. <coughs> Right, we got we got a bit of time. Okay. My my only my only argument not argument I want to say my, my only thought on it is that it's still the same as the ancient Egyptians had. The ancient point. Have you finished with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, just use my part. Is this, I, 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 st I would yeah. still think it's you know it's maybe it's not not that it's not for us to know, but we're at a point where we are still trying to. You know, figure it out, but 
really, it's too complicated. Because you look like, as you say, you look at the mathematics of Musk. The order of where the planets are aligned and how Mars clearly went through a mishap and because of how close it is, much closer to the sun than it is. Oh, is it further? <coughs> I can't remember now. But it's further away. But it, that still got wrecked it's still an overheated ball. Okay. That's where I was going. So yes, yeah, perfect. But it showed that even that shows intelligent wreckage and design. Yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. Yeah, that could have been a test for all we know. It could have been a plaything. We could be floating around, we could just be someone's little petri dish experiment. And then they've got, well, I mean, Mars got wrecked. That was our first experiment. Now let's just make sure Jupiter is capturing all these asteroids, which it does, which is why the ancient Romans and all of those, and the Greeks used to think that, well, you know, God of, uh, what's it, Petri War? Right, right. I'm not sure. Um, but it literally is there to take and absorb all these asteroids. Now, coming back to the whole mind and matter, it's a phenomena that we are trying to put into our own human existence when really you could just argue that that mind